So maybe you run a criminal empire, or perhaps you rule the roost of your own chicken coop. Maybe you end a date with an epic kiss of death. If so, you're one of the hundreds of millions of people that plays those addictive games on Facebook. Today we're talking the business of social gaming. Welcome to Venture the World of Small Business and Big Ideas. I'm Chris Valerio. care about your farm or your fish or your park or your mafia or your cafe, I could go on and on, <laughs> then you probably care about Zynga. Today we're talking the social gaming uh, founder network, if we can call it that, Zynga. Mark Pink is joining us. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so let's get started quickly here with a little bit kind of about where you came from. So uh, you grew up in Chicago, played soccer, by the way, I saw that. Your first company was uh, Freeloader, um, acquired in 1996 by Individual Inc. for $38 million. Talk to me a little bit about kind of building that first enterprise that you had and where that came from. Sure. Uh, well, I think I had been, I'd say, a refugee of a lot of corporate jobs. And a lot of us realize, some of us realize quickly and some it takes five or 10 years to realize that we should go be our own boss or entrepreneur. And for me, uh, it was really in 1995 when the internet was just getting going uh, that I saw this opportunity to, to marry my long-term desire to be an entrepreneur with uh, the amazing opportunity that I started to see happening in new media and internet. And, and I got together with this friend of mine that I had known from a swimming pool we hung out with <laughs> at, uh, in DC. And he was at AOL. And we decided we were going to uh, kind of come up with uh, a consumer service that would solve early problems people had in, in navigating the internet. And so uh, we just launched without really knowing did how to do business. Did you have money? Did you, I mean, what did you do? Well, and this, it's good I'm talking to Bloomberg's audience because I feel like <laughs> they'll be able to relate to this or not. But I did have savings. I had about $80,000. And I thought I was all set to quit my job and go on this adventure. And during the first couple months before we got going, I had shorted the three internet stocks of the time because <laughs> even though I was in it, I thought they were overvalued. And uh, I was right eventually about two of them, <laughs> Netcom and PSI. But in the short term, they went way up. And <laughs> so I lost all my money. Oh, my goodness. Right as I was starting. So, so I had to go back to the cliche credit cards. And I had a Best Buy card and a Target. And they had a 14-month interest-free deal. So... I managed to buy ten thousand dollars worth of computer equipment, you know, with them financing me. You eventually sell it for thirty-eight million, certainly making back probably more than what you were shorting those stock for. <laughs> I would assume. Um, SecondCompanySupport.com that eventually went public in two thousand. So you did the acquisition standpoint, you did the IPO, done both of those things. The third company, TribeNet, which was one of the first social networks, uh, eventually selling parts to Cisco. Talk to me about getting into the kind of that social networking space and that first step, this third kind of entrepreneurial uh, task that you went under. Sure. Well, for me, this whole social media uh, genre started with Napster. So I was lucky enough. Well, I shouldn't say lucky enough because I lost money on this too. But, but I was one of the first investors in Napster. And if you remember, Napster was the beginning of this person-to-person -person internet movement. And at any given time, there were 5 million people connecting to each other. And there was no corporation or database in the middle. And eventually, that was a problem for Napster. But but the, the idea of people connecting directly with each other on the internet was powerful. And so I went on to invest in Friendster, and soon after that launched Tribe, because I saw this new kind of internet, this social internet evolving, where people uh, could have direct relationships, and it wouldn't be this big public place, but it could be intimate. And this kind of then leads us to where Zynga came about, because it kind of takes all your previous ex uh, experiences and kind of fuses it together. So where did you first get the idea? I know that uh, in July 2008, you raised $29 million, uh, led by Kleiner Perkins. That was your first fundraising, is that correct? Second. Second, okay. So, so then tell us about where the idea came about and how you get started the process of to actually make it real. Sure. Well, uh, it starts with failing with Tribe. Um, <laughs> that's an important starting. But, but while I was doing Tribe, I, saw, I learned a lot of lessons. I saw that People were hanging out on Friendster and Tribe and these social networks and eventually MySpace and Facebook. 
but you got them all together for this cocktail party, but then there wasn't something to do with your friends. And people would say there's nothing to do on the social network. So I thought that giving people games was this perfect fusing of being social and playing and entertaining. So, so I was really excited about that. And when Facebook opened their API in early 2007, I saw this just amazing opportunity. Um, and it, it started to occur to me that there could be this new kind of development relationship that's more like cable TV with Bloomberg or HBO, where you could have um, a, a game programming effort that is independent of the network itself. And now there's you know hundreds of thousands of development efforts. But, but that was exciting. I saw this opportunity to uh, get to this large audience. and So let me just to ask this. Yeah. So was the idea of Facebook opening up this kind of developer platform, was that really what led, was the catalyst to actually create the company? So it, from the beginning, it had Facebook in mind? Yeah, I'd say it was, it was definitely Facebook was opening was the first catalyst because we wanted to do social games. So I wasn't just interested in games. I had looked at the gaming business and it was actually mature. So in 2007, it was all about these downloads that you would pay for on the web and it was a mature big but not growing business and he thought he could do something different mark pincus the founder of zynga you're watching venture stay with us